y'all, welcome back. This song's called My Baby's Gone from Robert Belfort. I think you'll have a lot of fun learning it and even more fun playing it. Let me play the rest of it and then I'll teach you the parts. So first off, the tuning on this is kind of unusual. It's a standard tuning, but it's C sharp standard. So we've tuned everything down three half steps. It'd be like E flat and then to D standard and then C sharp standard tuning. It's pretty low. You might have a hard time trying to get into this tuning since it's so low, but I think what helps is if you go even lower than the tuning and then tighten the strings back up to pitch. That helps it stay in tune. At the end, I'll do a slow playthrough in standard tuning so that y'all can play along. So the main call phrase is like this. Hammer on, hammer on. One, two, three, and four, and. Okay, and then we go into a monotonic bass with this thumb is just clicking on the downbeats, and then the riff sounds like this. Very slowly. Notice that pull off there. I'm playing with three different fingers of my right hand. I'm pretty positive that when he plays this, he's playing with just one or two fingers, but I think there's so many advantages to be able to play with three fingers. I think it's worth giving it a shot. So that's a tough phrase. So you should try to loop it like that so you can get it under your fingers. So going forward, that would be the main phrase. He has several variations that he plays. I'm gonna show you a bonus way that you can come up with your own phrases on this song too. Here are the variations. The call is always the same. And then he does some kind of variation on that main riff. The second variation we'll call the short slide. And that sounds like this. So notice what I did there. The top part of the riff sounds like this. He doesn't slide all the way up when he plays it and it gives it more of that dirty flavor. Notice all those little pull-offs in there too. That's important to be able to play it up to speed. You wouldn't be able to pluck all those notes most likely in time. So we're always going back and forth between the, between the call and response phrases. Another response phrase that we have sounds like this. So putting it in context sounds like this, call. Now one thing you notice that I'm doing here is on the first call phrase, I like to add a little bit of percussion, a little snare hit on there. So I'm just kind of giving it one of those slaps. This is way more advanced than it needs to be for the song when he's playing it. He doesn't actually add that very often. You can hear it that he adds it sometimes. And I just think it's really fun to play it like that. So I add it every single time I do the call phrase. Another thing I'm adding on the call phrase that he doesn't always add, sometimes he adds this, but he adds like a little bit more of that syncopation by popping the top strings in between the first and second notes. So that sounds like this. So just in between. It just gives it a little bit more groove to it and it's really fun to play it that way. All right, finally, he also does this variation on the main riff. There, he's doing this phrase with the monotonic bass. It's just really coming from that minor pentatonic, which brings us to the bonus riffs that you could also add. You can add in anything from the minor pentatonic. So as long as you do that call phrase, then the second time you can just kind of play notes from the minor pentatonic. So 
I'm just kind of noodling some of these variations based on the minor pentatonic. And I added some of those in the short little arrangement that I did at the beginning of this video. Now that call and response part is not the whole song. There's also an A7 chord and a B7. Anytime he plays that A7, he's singing the verse and then he goes back into that main riff like this. Now before he changes from the main riff into an A7, or you also see this later into the B7, he always plays this transition riff right before he changes chords. It sounds like this. So he's just playing this kind of E7 part as a transition chord to get into an A7. Now he also plays that transition into the B7 chord. And when he gets to the B7, he does this B7 riff a7 riff back to the main riff. That whole part sounds like this. And then it goes back into the main phrases. All right, so those are all the parts. I know I went really quickly, so I'm gonna do a slow playthrough in standard tuning right now with metronome clicking and tabs on screen so you guys can try to play along. Now the performance I did at the very beginning was a shortened arrangement so that I could fit all the parts in in a shorter amount of time so you guys can hear them in context. This playthrough is gonna be more accurate to the way that he plays the parts in the order. It's not exactly the same. When he plays it, he's gonna be adding extra bars here and there to fit the lyrics and things like that. So you really, if you're using this for a performance song, you really wanna to listen to his performance a bunch of times and memorize the lyrics. And that'll tell you how long to stay on that A7 chord because he's always singing over that A7 chord. And that's really the only change from what I'm playing to what he's doing. <laughs> So that's kind of what it sounds like in standard tuning. Let's slow it way down and put the tabs on the screen. The original is at 152 BPM. Let's slow this down to about half, a little bit faster than half at like 80 BPM. And remember, if you join FGA members, you can download these tabs so you can print them out. For this slow playthrough, I'm not gonna do all the fancy percussion and stuff on there. Sometimes I might accidentally hit that percussion because that's how I've been playing it today, but for the most part, he doesn't play it like that, so I'm gonna try to keep it accurate to the way that he plays it. Two, three, four.
So that's it for this one. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.